Welcome to the Founders Focus Podcast. For more than 25 years, TechCore has worked to ensure K through 12th grade students in the United States have equal access to technology programs, skills, and resources that enhance early learning and prepare them for college or career. Founders Focus invites you along for the journey as we examine technology and how it impacts the way we work and live. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of TechCore's Founders Focus Podcast Series. My name is Gary Beach. I am Vice Chair and Founder of TechCore. As part of Ohio's In Demand Jobs Week, our very own National Executive Director, Lisa Chambers, will lead a conversation in bringing together state government leaders, including Ohio Lieutenant Governor John Eusted and Development Director Lydia Mahalik, alongside TechCore alumni, students, and business partners. I know you will enjoy the conversation. Well, thanks, everyone. It's great to um, see you. I'm so excited to um, welcome you. My name is Lisa Chambers. I'm the National Director of TechCore, and we're excited to have this discussion um, during In Demand Jobs Week um, here in Ohio. I want to thank the public officials for for joining us, including Lieutenant Governor Husted, Director Mahalik, and uh, Deputy Director Johannesson um, for joining us. I think, Lieutenant Governor, I think we just want you to know how much we appreciate you championing workforce development here in the state of Ohio and recognizing the important role that the technology sector play. Um, And also, I think, just the important role um, of partnerships between industry and and education and the nonprofit um, community. So we're excited to share with you um, some of the amazing and impactful partnerships um, that TechCore has built and to have some of the students who have gone through TechCore programs talk about their their experiences. One of the partnerships that we're so excited about is this new partnership between uh, Willow Tree and and TechCore. Um, I want to thank TD and his team here at Willow Tree for hosting us today. Um, We're... (laughs) You know, you you meet people, right, in relationships, and you you just know you have a bond, and you know you're going to do some great stuff together. And TD, that has been exactly the way that we felt about your team here at Willow Tree. So we're excited to to partner and think about the ways that we will work together to expand access to computer science and to technology learning experiences for kids uh, through through this new partnership. TD, I don't know, do you want to say anything? Yeah. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, we really appreciate our partnership with the state. Um, When we look at the digital world that we operate in, the U.S. is about a million and a half folks shy in computer science, right? That is just a massive opportunity for this country. We only educate about 400,000 a year in four-year computer science programs. And right now, about half of those are foreign nationals, so they can't, most of them can't work in the U.S. So there's just a massive opportunity and a shortfall. And by working together in groups like this, we can fill that need in the United States versus having those jobs go overseas. And so um, it's a critical, critical partnership to take kids and expose them at a young age across all walks of life to computer science, to technology, and then have programs that are not just four-year schools. They play an important part, but community colleges, um, boot camps, et cetera, to bring the next generation of kids into this and make sure it's as diverse as possible and as reflective of our entire society as we can. So thanks for having us and we're excited to partner with you. Lieutenant Governor, before you you, um, share some remarks, I just want to just take a minute to introduce you a little bit more, tell you a little bit more about TechCore. So we're a nonprofit, uh, national nonprofit organization that's headquartered here in Columbus. We've been around since 1995. And at our core, we just believe that all kids should have access to high quality technology learning experiences. And so TechCore does two things. We develop computer science and technology programs for students in third through 12th grade. And those programs can be anything from just a four hour workshop with a group of Girl Scouts introducing them to coding all the way up to a deep immersion program where students like Dalen are with us for almost 245 hours in a year and will walk out with an industry recognized credential or even college credit. So that's kind of the first thing we do. The second thing we do is we recruit, train, and deploy technology talent to implement our programs. So here in Columbus, 
companies like Willow Tree, companies like Nationwide, JP Morgan Chase, American Electric Power, we recruit folks out of their technology department, we match them up with curriculum, and then they go out and inspire um, our next generation, right? Um, we also do a lot of work with colleges and, and universities. We bring their undergrads onto the core, and then they go out in the community and work um, with students uh, down the street, right? And so last year, Tech Core probably served more than 3,000 students across our footprint. Majority of those students were here in Ohio, and we just want to really think through today, how do we make sure that every student in Ohio has access to high quality computer science learning experiences and how do we do that as as a community so I want to thank you again for spending the afternoon with us and having this conversation and I will turn it over to you and your team well thank you for hosting us and, and thank you for that overview uh, I too am going to do an overview to start of, of the circumstances that exists, the climate that exists in the state of Ohio right now. Um, we, at present, if you were to go on ohiomeansjobs.com, which is our state um, job posting website, you would find 249,000 jobs on there today. Nearly 150,000 of those jobs pay $50,000 a year or more. And we only have 49,000 people on unemployment in the state of Ohio. So we have essentially three jobs available that pay $50,000 a year or more for every one person on unemployment. We have nearly record low unemployment rate, which is 4.1% lower than what it was pre-pandemic. Uh, we are creating jobs in the state faster than we can find people to fill them. Not uncommon uh, in America today. We have demographic challenges as a nation and as a state because people are turning 65 faster than they're turning 18 and exiting the workforce and birth rates in all developed countries are, are declining in America. If you were to look at America's birth rates over the last 20 years, you'll see that they've dramatically declined. And without uh, a, um, without new students coming in, without a, an immigration system that can bring people from other places to solve our dilemma of work, workforce dilemma, we can't afford as a nation to leave anyone off the playing field who would like to be there, which is a challenge for businesses, but it's an opportunity for everyone to make their lives better, to earn skills that give them the opportunity to earn higher salaries, have job security, have mobility, have the freedom that comes with uh, having choices in life. And the key critical part of making that happen is making sure that everybody who needs access to those job training and educational programs has access to them. And let's face it, traditionally, the American education and job training system has been pretty rigid. It's been pretty, this is what we offer. Hopefully you can fit it into your life. Uh, but these circumstances have created a recognition of the need for alternative ways to help people succeed different pathways, both within the K through 12 and higher education system and in the workforce, people who are already out there who may want to upskill or reskill. And so as we are in the midst of in-demand jobs week here in Ohio, uh, we're trying to highlight uh, the opportunities for people to take advantage of these variety of options that are being created. We've done this within our education system in Ohio by helping to create incentives in our K through 12 system for more students graduating with in-demand job credentials. We've done this through our partner with our partners at Jobs Ohio and trying to build innovation districts where we triple the number of STEM graduates over the next 10 years uh, in those areas with, with our partnered institutions. 
We've also done it with programs like TechCred, which allow employers will pay up to $2,000 to help upskill somebody who's already in the workforce, or up to $3,000 for somebody who's seeking a job in Ohio. So we've done a variety of things to reorient our job training system to be more customer service friendly. But partnerships are important, as you mentioned. Uh, there are a variety of ways to both effectively and efficiently deliver job training services and new beginnings and new opportunities to people. And so we are excited to be here today uh, to learn more about uh, you, what you're working on and uh, to celebrate and educate uh, all of Ohio and the variety of ways that people can earn these STEM skills and credentials and I'm interested to, to hear more. So with that, let me uh, uh, turn it over to Director Mahalik to offer uh, any additional thoughts and then we'll get the conversation started. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and, and thank you uh, all for being here today. And I, I am anxious uh, to hear uh, particularly from the students who have been a part of this program. And um, it, the Lieutenant Governor uh, makes some very, uh, very good points. And the good news uh, when uh, we reflect on, on all of these things is that Ohio is winning, right? Uh, and uh, we have to do everything that we can in order to continue to win. We've got to get people uh, in the game. He's right. We've got to get them uh, onto the playing field. And so programs uh, like Tech Core and, and the other uh, programs that we put into place uh, in working with industry, which I think is really, really important. I think there's been some programs perhaps in the past that have been maybe a little more government focused and we haven't really listened uh, to what industry has been telling us. Programs like TechCred uh, that we, where we have listened to industry have been really successful uh, and, and we have a lot to show for it, about 40,000 almost uh, industry recognized credentials that we put into play. Uh, are, are, are just doing great uh, at this point. But other things uh, that we've also been able to do that are really, really helpful uh, to, to getting uh, students uh, the, the real life experience uh, and exposure to these tech jobs. Uh, uh, internships uh, that the state has really put uh, into place in working uh, with industry. Our diversity and inclusion uh, internship program, uh, which uh, has been uh, very good uh, through our Third Frontier program. The high school uh, tech internship program, uh, which has been wonderful, uh, a wonderful pilot program that we launched uh, about uh, 12 months ago. Uh, we have our manufacturing extension uh, partnership program and then our export internship program. It's a really uh, important part of feeding Ohio's workforce pipeline uh, and uh, we're really looking forward again to giving students that real world experience uh, with Ohio businesses and it's critical in order uh, to continue to put Ohio in that position uh, to continue to win. I'm excited to hear uh, about these experiences and thank you so much again uh, for having us here today. Absolutely. Let's start with some quick introductions so you can know who you're talking to. Doug, do you want to kick us off? Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Doug McCullough. I am a board member of TechCore. I'm also a board member of Perscalis. Uh, I am the CIO of the city of Dublin. I'm the CEO of Color Coded Labs, which is a tech boot camp. Uh, for gritty, hardworking adults. Um, and I have a number of other workforce-oriented uh, things that I do. I've been speaking about it, and that's how Lisa got me to the board. Uh, so, But it is a real pleasure being with the students, with you, uh, with peers and colleagues here today as well. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. Uh, my name is Jermaine Henson. Uh, I am also a board member for Tech Core uh, and Perscalis. Uh, and I am a vice president at Nationwide Insurance, leading nationwide financial technology, uh, what we call integrated digital services. Uh, and it has been not just a joy and a pleasure to be a part of the Tech Core team, uh, as well as the Perscalis team, but it's also a joy and a pleasure to be able to be a recruiter of some of this top talent. Uh, one of which I'm sitting next to today. Uh, so we, we like to get actively involved, if you will, uh, in these programs and 
and, and really take advantage of uh, this pipeline that we would otherwise not have opportunity to, to really explore. Amazing. Hello, my name is Marjorie. I am a Tech Corp alumni as well as a Perscalis alumni. I have gone through both of the programs multiple times and I can tell you that I have reaped a lot of rewards and accomplishments through them. I'm right now apprenticing at Nationwide in the problem team um, management. So I take care of root cause analysis and find out uh, things that will go wrong and uh, diagnose them and identify them. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel Johansson. I'm the Deputy Director of the Governor's Office of Workforce Transformation. So I work for the Lieutenant Governor on all these workforce issues. Um, before I introduce myself, I would first like to thank my mother. I would not be here today speaking to the Lieutenant Governor without my mom. She's currently working on her um, PhD at Youngstown State. And yeah, so I am Daylon Allen. Um, I've been involved with Tech Corp since I believe eighth grade, that's when I did my first hackathon. I'm currently a Eagle candidate, finishing some stuff up with the Boy Scouts. And yeah, it's pretty much me. Oh, I'm a senior and I go to Columbus Downtown High School. D Dalen, uh, what's your mom's name? Uh, Taraja Shepard Allen. Well, thank you. <laughs> I would also like to thank my mother, who is right here. Very good, Jacob. Very good. Very good. Who is right here in the crowd? We were nervous, who, Jacob. We didn't yeah. know. <laughs> who ended up introducing me to Tech Corps through her school, Zane State, Ohio, and uh, I would just like to thank her for introducing me to everyone here and being able to get the chance to meet you because this is one of my first times doing something like this. But my name is Jacob Keffer. I go to Tri-County Career Center in Nelsonville, Ohio. I am a senior in networking. And the first year I think I did Tech Core was probably two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually two times winning from those two experiences that I had. And it, it, it saddens me that I can't go back and compete in those again, really. Because <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing those. Yeah. And what, what year did you say you were? I am a senior. senior. Okay. Well, great. Well, we have a lot of questions for the students. Yeah. If we can. <laughs> um, and, I'll, and I'll allow any of you in whatever order you want to talk about talk through this, but I'm interested in how you learned about it and what you're doing and then what your long-term goals are and maybe what certifications you've earned, if you've earned college credits. Tell me, tell me how that works. Whoever would like to start. Um. Um, like I said, I've been involved with Tech Corp since eighth grade. I think the first time I learned about computers and basically doing anything with computers was at my middle school. I actually was able to bring home a computer and basically take it apart and figure out how everything works and stuff. So I watched YouTube videos, learn about like a CPU, RAM, and all that, the motherboard and everything. And then once I got involved, a few, um, I wouldn't even say a few years, like that year I got involved with COSI and in COSI they have a program called Gadgets. Basically there's, um, in the program Gadgets, there's a program where you can take a computer from the back and then give it to a guest and so they allow me to take a computer home and then start building, taking apart computers and rebuilding them and then I built my first gaming PC through COSI and then after that, into high school, ninth grade and 10th grade, um, in my junior ROTC program, my um, major, major Klubik, he allowed me to create a program within the school because we have a, I went to Fort Hayes for those first two years, so in the Fort Hayes, we have a lot of broken down computers and like computers that don't work 
and what the students need to get on the computers because Google Classroom and all the Google Suites and Microsoft and stuff like that. So he allowed me to create a program within the school to um, build computers and give it to the teachers and then they can easily distribute the computers to the students and um, stuff like that. And then that same year I got, I think it was either ninth or 10th grade, I got involved with a hackathon at Tech Corps. It was with Cover My Meds. And through that hackathon, I didn't win it, but it was still a, it was still a great experience. I learned a lot. I had learned a lot of team leadership and stuff like that. So. Um, Tell me about that experience with the hackathon. What, what, what did you learn there? Uh, with the hackathon, I knew a little bit of HTML, so we actually created a website. Oh, shoot, I forgot what it was, but we created a website, and basically the website, it was something to do with sound, but it was, in the hackathon, the requirement was to do create a solution to a problem in the community with um app inventor yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we figured out that and it was really a great experience because i was able to look at other projects going around um just walking around the hackathon you can just see what everybody else was doing and pick pot like i'm gonna say pick um pick apart what they were doing and figure out how you can implement um, implement that into your idea and use that to help, you know, win the competition, but still didn't win, but yeah. <laughs> He's a little competitive. That's all right. So, so any uh, credentials, college credits come along with what you've been doing? Um, I believe the one I'm doing currently with J.P. Morgan they have a credential set up when I finish. So, yeah. so Daylin's currently in a program that he'll go into this summer, and one of the things, he'll do 200 hours over the course of the summer. It's a learn and earn program, and at the end, he'll sit for his CompTIA IT Fundamentals exam. And that's with J.P. Morgan That's Chase. sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase. Okay. And uh, what do you want to do when you graduate? <laughs> Um, next year, and not even say next year, this August I will be attending Ohio University on a full ride ROTC scholarship. And with that, I'll be majoring in computer science and planning to get a job or an internship within the university. Or if I don't get an internship within the university, I'll always, I'll always have something going on. So I'll figure out a way to create like either an app or security software or something, yeah. something, something. So, so what, what branch of the military are you interested in? Oh, um, Army ROTC. Army ROTC. Yes. Great. Well, uh, the head of the National Guard here in Ohio, General Harris, I'm sure he'd have a place for you if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you we, we always need somebody with those skills. So. Uh, if that doesn't work out, you can always come right back here. <laughs> Jacob or Marjorie, who's next? Who wants to offer? Oh. You can go ahead if you want to. Uh, okay. So um, my freshman year of high school, I used to go. I, was, I used to go to the office a lot to find out about programs around the school. So like either it'd be like food drives or things to do after school. And one day I came upon a flyer that says like big bold letters, free computer. <laughs> and I remember thinking I, I could definitely use this for because I used to like video editing at the time. I was like I can definitely use this and learn. So um, all you needed to do was go uh, take some tech classes. And I was like. I can do this after school. Um, I went to the after school program and I realized, wait a minute, I actually like this. I actually like learning about, uh, my favorite part of that program was actually learning robotics. So we got to um, tell robots what to do and go through courses. And then we learned web development. And I just loved being there. It was something I got to do after school. What was your school? Uh, Westland High School. Westland, mm -hmm. okay. So that's how I learned about Tech Corp. And then there was no like limit about, even the classes would be the same, but there was no limit on how many times you can go back. 
So I just kept going back and taking multiple, so I took their summer course as well, which is the Computing Career Corp, where it's mainly web development. And um, yeah, I just learned so much from them. On my last time that I took a Tech Corp class is where someone from Perscolis came in and talked about their program. And I was already a junior at the time. So um, I kept that in the back of my mind. Um, but after graduating high school, I did not go straight into tech. I went into video production. It wasn't until the pandemic hit and um, I got laid off from the internship that I landed in high school that I remembered about Perscolis. So during that time um, that I, I was on unemployment, um, I took the time to skill up with Perscolis and that's where I was offered an opportunity to go through Nationwide to become an apprentice. So that is what I'm currently doing now. So where did you graduate from high school? Yes. Yeah, you're graduated. When did you graduate? 2019. 2019. And then you're in, a, you're in an apprenticeship program with Nationwide. Mm -hmm. Did you earn credentials or credits, college credits, when you're in high school? Yes. So do, with the Tech Corp, when the web, that's my bad, web development, I earned, earned college credit for web development. And then through, pers yes, okay. for Scholas, I earned more certifications. So you web development, and then you're now an apprenticeship at Nationwide. And so tell me about that. What What's... What's that process? How does it, where does it end? So it started before, the apprenticeship started before I even got to Nationwide. So they were, Perscolis had made a course specifically for us apprentices to go to Nationwide. So it teaches all the skills, bef what we need beforehand. Um, so we learned JavaScript, Kubernetes, Docker, um, Cloud, some AWS, um, because we wouldn't know which um, section of Nationwide will be. So we got a foundation of all that. And then we did one-on-one -on -one interviews with someone at Nationwide who placed us where they felt we would fit best and what we felt like we wanted. Um, so that's how I ended up on the team that I am currently. Okay. And how much longer is your apprenticeship? Three more months. Three more months. And are you earning are you earning a salary now? Or? Uh, it's, it is hourly, but it's... Hourly? Yeah, yeah I, I get paid good. <laughs> get paid. <laughs> and so they're paying you. You're not paying them for this education, right? Yes. So, so did you... Is any of this cost you any money out no. of your pocket? Okay. And you, Dalen, any money out of your pocket to earn these skills? No. Okay. So you're earning and learning, not paying to earn. To learn, which is a great thing, right? It's better to get paid to do it than. It's, how, um, it's a fun thing about an apprenticeship. It, it, it happened even before uh, my apprenticeship. Uh, computing Career Corp was also paid to learn. So even in high school, I was getting paid to learn technology. And, and so, are you planning on going to college? So, the thing about college is I did go, but not for tech, um, I realized that I like learning more through these part, these programs. Mm -hmm. I'm not bound by grades. I'm bound by my accomplishments and what I can do in the classroom. Yeah. So I always felt like I did better. It's a better pathway for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't do it later on if you want to, but you yeah. know, why not get a job and make some money first, right? Then, yep. And I'm sure Nationwide will chip in if you ever want to <laughs> go and... After oh. our apprenticeships, you will uh, be hired full time. So one of yeah. the things that we do in these apprenticeships uh, is we convert after the you know after the apprenticeship is over, we convert into full time employment. And so you're absolutely right. As a benefit of Nationwide, there is tuition reimbursement that she could use through her you know time at Nationwide to continue her education. Uh, not just tuition reimbursement, but access to things like LinkedIn, Future of Work, etc. So. Mm -hmm. 
to mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor, I'd say Marjorie mentioned the learn and earn experience, and both Marjorie and Daylin have been in programs that have been supported by Franklin County Department of Job and Family Services, where we have, when you have a student that is investing 100, 200 hours in the summertime, that often means they can't work a traditional summer job, right? Yep. And we didn't want the need to also have income be the barrier for our students to participate in programs where they really could learn a set of skills that get them, you know, nothing wrong with working at McDonald's, but why not train up, you know, some students in web development or coding um, so that they're getting credentials, they're getting college credit, and they're really getting prepared for that, that next. Um, so I'm really excited about Franklin County thinking about kids in that way and making those types of investments. Um, because I think it brings in more students and it opens it up to more students who, who maybe wouldn't have been able to participate in a program like this. What's your, what's your job going to be when you finish your apprenticeship? So it, it is, um, right now I'm working on the enterprise problem team management. So it's like a solutions developer. It's, um, yeah. it, it, it's, that's what I do. It doesn't have an official title. <laughs> Well, you know, to just expand a little bit on that, you know, problem He'll tell you what the title is. <laughs> you know, the problem management team helps us identify the underlying root cause when we have some kind of underlying technology issue, whether that be a defect or a system outage or things like that. So they, they swarm incidents and use both their technical skills as well as their troubleshooting and analysis skills to help us then prevent the recurrence of that, that event. So that's the type of work that she's doing and the type of skills that she's developing. Great. So, uh, Jacob, I've been to Tri-County Career Center several times. So I, I know the school and we've been working with them on a variety of projects, including a, a, um, a program, a night program to help people learn to install broadband. Uh, that we're building out, particularly in southeastern Ohio. So tell me about your experience, uh, Tri-County Career Center, not next to Nationwide or J.P. Morgan, right? It's out there uh, all the way far away from those kinds of companies. So tell me about your situation. So when I first went to school, I went to Fisher Catholic for my high school. I got through my first two years there, and I didn't really care for it. We had visited Rosecrans and Zanesville, and they had a robot fighting club up there. So that got me interested in more tech-related stuff like that. And then more on, I ended up getting into gaming and then finding out the pathways through gaming you can do, including stuff with PCs. And that's what really interested me, building PCs with my hands because with my ADHD, I like to mess around with stuff and keep busy like that. And the first time I learned about it was, I believe halfway through my first year at Tri-County from my mom, who is an alumni from Zane State, who was on the Facebook page and got linked in it. And I learned through that. And the first time we did that, it was something to help with school, I believe, was our theme. And I don't remember what the app was called, but I think it was something like Study Buddy. What we made for it was a studying timer app, kind of like Quizlet, but with a timer involved in it, so then you can have set studying times, or you can put in your own time. This last time we did it, it was called Reconnect, which was a friend-making app to make friends after COVID hit us because people weren't getting out as much, they lost friend groups, and people just needed to really reconnect with the people around them. And right now I have my OSHA certification and we are working on getting our Cisco certification through them. What we do there is, in your senior year, you have two classes in networking, or in all your career plan classes. You have your normal class, and then you have your related class. 
are related, we are going through Linux. So I will have knowledge in Linux as well. And the first year I went there, we went and did cybersecurity as part of our main course. And I do not remember if we get the certification for that or not through them after we graduate. But after we graduate, we have all of our stuff set up into what we call our passport. It's not an actual passport. What it is is a one-inch binder that has all of our stuff in it. Like certifications you got through them, your, like anything you did through them, like letters of recommendation, resume, all that stuff you do there. And then after school, I plan on working for a little bit to get money saved up and possibly go to Zane State like my mom did because it's close by and it'd just be the easiest for me. So what are you going to work? Are you gonna, do you know where you're going to work, what you're going to do? My dream type of job would be working for a game-related company or somewhere like Google because they have a few places here in Ohio that they have been making. Like, last, not last year, but recently, Google bought, I believe, a few hundred acres of land here in Ohio somewhere. They did. <laughs> yeah. I know all about it. <laughs> and one of the things I would love to do is work in the server farms, which sometimes they build underground for the natural insulation that they have because it's colder. Lot, the colder lots, of server, lots of servers in uh, yeah. central Ohio. So yeah. if that's what you want to do, we know some people. So <laughs> we would, we would uh, I think they would love to have you. So yeah. yeah, that's great. So get a job, get your certifications, get a job working for them, and they'll be like nationwide. They'll help, uh, they'll help pay for your uh, schooling if you want to do it. So. Yeah, I, I looked at PlayStation's company a lot and they actually offer, I believe, around like 25 to 30 different like job associated, I don't know how to word it. I just can't, yeah. I so can't word it you, correctly. If you go, so this would be an interesting drive for anybody in the room to go out to, I think it's near Beach Road. Uh, you can drive all the way up from the Intel site where we're gonna build the largest semiconductor facility in the world. And you drive south and you'll go past Facebook and Google and, or Meta, Google, Amazon. You'll see these huge buildings and it's all tech. And and uh, there's a lot of those opportunities right out around uh, the corner. Not to mention J.P. Morgan Chase and Nationwide, who still need a lot of people too. Uh, and uh, there's just a lot of great opportunities in tech that are continuing to evolve in Ohio. And what I love about um, what the, the stories that you all shared today is that you started with your high school, you got connected with TechCore, uh, you um, didn't have to pay out of your own pockets to get access to these educational opportunities, and you've had, you've had uh, in many cases, some good uh, private sector relationships. But that is what we need more of. There's plenty of demand for these skills and pathways for students to get their credentials without having to go and take student debt uh, and put themselves in a position to be successful. So for the tech core or the private sector, anybody who would like to um, speak to this, and director, if you have questions, please, please ask. But how does it get started? How does a student learn about it? Is every school making this available? What, what are the barriers? Tell us how we help you make sure more students have access? That's a great question. Um, it, it really depends. I think one of the things that you pointed out, Lieutenant Governor, is, is you talked about, so Jacob is in a more rural area, right? And because Jacob's in a more rural area, he doesn't have a J.P. Morgan Chase or a Nationwide sitting in his backyard. 
Our programs are free to students because for the most part they're supported by corporations that are around urban centers. Mm -hmm. And so at the state like Ohio, a majority of our students are in more rural areas. We've got to start thinking differently about how do we make sure that kids like Jacob have just as much access as a student like Bailey, right? Um, and I think that that's where we'd love to continue to, to think with the state and with our partners about who's gonna make sure that we're investing in our students in our rural areas so that they have the same type of access and we're not overlooking them as, as a possible uh, pipeline to, to the workforce needs that we're gonna have in the state. Okay. Can I add to that? Please. <clears throat> Uh, one, one of the reasons why Jermaine and I are on the board is because of those corporate relationships. TechCore is an organization that works at kind of below that 12th grade level, and it works with companies to bring attention, resources, mentors, all sorts of things there. And I think a big part of reaching students has to do with the narrative and the conversation we're having, particularly in the corporate. And I say corporate, I think we know that a huge amount of technology jobs are at that middle level, small company startup. So, you know, we're saying that to include all of those things. But um, I think we're seeing that students jump on when they get exposure. And I'm just fascinated hearing about hackathons, COSI, these touch points that have always been there. And the more we can get that corporate support to really go heavy on this, the more we can get those COSI visits and, and follow through and follow up on that with those corporate mentors and, and other people who are going to be around uh, so that students see someone and know what roles they might be interested in getting towards. And that's why it brings these technology leaders to bear. And, and I think that that's working. Um, but I'm very pleased to hear about all the different touch points here in Ohio that we've all been working on for many years, whether it be a Cover My Meds, a COSI, a Tech Core, uh, a Tech Cred program, uh, and, and our incredible community college network, fixing the pipeline, getting it moving. Um, I, I'm just really pleased to hear that it, it seems to be functioning, you know, and getting better all the time. Okay. That's, I agree with that. It's, it is getting better, but it has to continue to improve. And it's just making those connections between helping everyone see from the moment that they start tearing a computer apart in eighth grade. <laughs> and rebuilding it and doing all the things that, that each of you are interested in, that there is a educational connection to that that leads to not only learning, but the credentials that are demonstrate your, your skills and your competencies. Uh, and then getting that connected to, uh, particularly like the apprenticeship models and uh, where students can continue to learn and earn at the same time that allow you to move into a career without high cost of college and then have uh, employers who are engaged in helping you continue to develop those skills uh, and be your partner in, in continuing your education. I mean, that's, that's the ideal model that we all wish existed for everyone, and it's just a matter of how do we help create more of those experiences for more students, and you do it school by school, student by student, business by business, but it, it's, uh, it's great to see your engagement. Director, do you have a question? I'm thinking about um, capacity. Where, where do you sit with that? Like, do you have, do you have room? How do you, how's the demand? The demand is great. Um, and again, I think, you know, for us, we've got great sponsors here that um, have allowed us. TechCore has been in Ohio since 1998. We took over the national charter in 2011. And part of that was because of the great work that was happening here in Ohio, that our founder came to the national board and said, this is, you all are doing some stellar stuff. You're developing new content. Um, your kind of demand and your student enrollment is continuing to go up. We want you to take over the national charter. And, we, and we've been able to do that. 
I think, you know, again, we can serve, we can serve as many kids as we have the, as we have the support to serve, right? Um, you know, we've got an amazing, um, small but mighty team, um, but we also, as Doug mentioned, we leverage hundreds of volunteers in the state of Ohio every year. Technology professionals who are sharing hours who want to give back. I mean, that's the thing. I think about um, Willow Tree, and, and when we were here last week, Folks are chomping at the bit to get out um, because the one thing about the technology sector and techies is that they're passionate and they want to pass on that passion, right? And so I think there's there's lots of opportunities here for us. I'm excited for the state of Ohio and what we've done around computer science. I think that's where we'll really start to make a difference around workforces when we say every kid in the state of Ohio is going to have a computer science class. Right? And so even if they come through and they decide this is not something I want to do, at least they're making informed decisions, right? Um, so Lisa, can I just add one thing? The, um, Doug said, it. I think the word exposure is getting kids exposure in middle school. When you look at the data, at, at a young age, there's very little difference in STEM interest, but you start, start to get to middle school and all of a sudden there's gender differences, there's race differences, there's socioeconomic differences in exposure. And it gets, it, it puts people on tracks that are really hard to undo later. There used to be a, a question, Google's first question, they said that the question that determined with most accuracy who would succeed at Google was how old were you when you got your first computer? And they would ask that. Um, and so it's about getting kids exposure early, and that has to be a private-public par private partnership because kids can see what a lawyer does on TV, they can see what a doctor does, but who knows what a coder does? Who knows what anyone, in t a tech designer does? And they don't have Uncle Bob who's getting them an internship, right? And so the mentorship role and the exposure role going into middle school and high school, we think, is where a huge, huge difference can be played where, you know, a generation from now, we have a much more balanced tech world where everyone can play in it, and the demand's there. We just have to develop the talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I build on that a little bit? So it's a couple of things. One, the passion side. So as Dalen was telling the story, Dalen, I'm a few years older than you, just maybe two or three. <laughs> and I remember getting in big trouble for taking apart the VCR. Now, this is when VCRs were like... Dalen's like, what's a VCR? <laughs> Like three years ago. Yeah, so, just stick with me. Yeah. You know, you, so you're what I call a digital native. I've always had the, the you know, curiosity and the willingness and the desire, and I, I can relate to that. And so as a technologist, um, that's where I think a lot of that passion comes because it starts for us early. The other thing that I would uh, build on is you talked about demand and capacity. There, the, the, the option to fill the roles that we need in the private sector in technology cannot be filled by traditional four-year engineering degrees and internships. It's not an option. We have to build pipelines to talent that we would otherwise not have access to. And we have to do that through things like tech core, personalis, et cetera. Uh, and we have to change the mental model on, again, the expectations that we have. Uh, relative to the, what we would consider to be the qualifications. Uh, you know, the, that mindset is shifting. Uh, it, and and I, as I think about this, you know, we, we're at Nationwide Technology looking to hire nearly 500 entry-level technologists, you know, over the next 12 to 18 months. We're competing with the Intels. We're competing with the J.P. Morgan Chases. There is not enough capacity for the demand. So we, we cannot succeed without these. I mean, it's, it's absolutely a win-win situation from my perspective. And, and, and you're, putting, you're putting people to work four years earlier than they might otherwise go to work. You're, you're, you're sort of front-loading the talent pool when you start them earlier so right. that you're engaging them when they're perfectly capable of doing this at 19 as they would be at 22. So, That's right. Yeah. Ta I'm just tagging in on, on your question also, uh, Director Mihalik. Um Maintaining successful programs is really important as well. And I think that a lot of tech companies go through these phases where one of the phases is great success and realizing we need this, we have this demand for this talent. The next phase is we should go into the schools 
and develop a program where we could get them interested in technology. And this is where Lisa says, hang on a second there. We're already there. And the amount of time and resources it takes to successfully enter into public or private uh, school systems is time that could be wasted because there are programs already in there that would fit you like a glove, you know, and one of the things that we need our tech community in, in, in Ohio to recognize is that you can get there now, this year, if you've got people and a little bit of money, you can get into these schools quickly uh, without having to rebuild the program. And so we have to use some of the programs that we've already uh, built, and it would be better for us to improve them than to start over every year. Um, and that's as a person who would love to build a new program. And that's, as technologists, that's how we think, right? Uh, I've got a great idea of what we can do in, in schools and work with these populations. Um, but we should survey the environment first and talk to all of the institutions that are already coordinating around these things. And that's another point of the message we need to get out front. For the students, what, what advice do you have for the adults in the room yeah. on how we can yeah. here, here. We reach more people in your age groups and younger? Um, I would say for the adults, just trying to reach out to people, you know, reaching out to students, coming to schools, letting them know what they have to offer and what the students need to bring to the team, like to the table, to get a job at their company. Help them understand the pathway. Yes. That makes, is that, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. I think that is a very, very good point. Like, not enough people are really getting interested in this because they don't have enough exposure to this pathway. Like, there are some games out there that I have seen that even bring up on or based around coding or hacktivists that are around us. There's a two game series, it's called Watch Dogs, that has actually three games out now that you play as a hacktivist trying to protect the little man. the Just the public person trying to keep their info private. Like, you go through multiple different levels trying to keep people safe and everything like that. That's one thing that also got me interested in this is because just so much stuff can be done with tech. Like, even lower grade tech can be made into something new and do something that no one ever thought of doing with. Seeing that inspired me to try to get into this field. And I think if we can somehow get that out there more for younger or even adult people, for them to see this, it can bring more people to the table to be able to be in this pathway. And, and to build on that, um, young, young adults, I feel like they, they shouldn't be left out because sometimes they will, my friends would be like, what, are, what do you do now? What, what, I thought you were in this. And I completely changed my career pathway, not in high school, but as a young adult after I was out of high school and I got into these programs again. Um, where The one thing I think that the reason these programs succeed us so much is that the people who actually gone through them have nothing but good things to say. The word, word of mouth is so powerful, so. <laughs> how do you know? And it's like, how do you, how do you, how do you reach people sometimes? Is there's, it's interesting because if you heard if you heard what I said at the beginning, probably didn't understand it all, but my point is is that literally you can get college credits, as many of them as you want to earn while you're in high school. You can earn industry credentials while you're in high school. Once you graduate, your employer will pay for your education or can through TechCred, or you can get through the IMAP program, the Individual Micro Credential uh, Program the state will pay for your credentials. So that's a free education for everyone, thanks to courtesy of the taxpayers of the state of Ohio. And not a lot of people know it's there. Uh, many people have other things in their lives that maybe are distracting them from taking, getting access or barriers in their life that prevent them from getting access. And we just gotta try to communicate it and knock down those barriers for as many. But you're right, it's harder because you, once you graduate, 
there are fewer people. You're, you don't have your teachers, you don't have your school. There's no sign that says free computer on the wall in the morning, you know. Yeah. There's, not, there's not as much outreach to you at that point in time. And that's, that is a, an important population that we're trying to, to reach. So the people, because I, when I went through preschool list, they weren't high schoolers or even young adults. They were adults with children. I asked them, like, how, how did you find out about preschool list or, or any of the programs? And at, because it does sound too good to be true, they first think it's a scam. But uh, Yeah, like well, if I saw a sign, because we, we're used to being scammed in the world, right? Yeah. If somebody says something free, it's like, no, that doesn't, that's not true. <laughs> They're trying to you know, scam me, right? Yeah. But uh, marketing does play a big part in it, so I'm glad that all these programs do keep a good social media. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Google reviewer or looking through Yelp, so I do a lot of verifying through there, and people will trust those sites and keep going with it, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to bring back what you said about college credit, I actually have a classmate that goes through our tech department with our, our IT guy. He's one of my friends from Southern Local School District, Adam. He actually is kind of doing an internship with them to get a college credit by helping him fix any of the PCs or the laptops or even Chromebooks that we have that break. Like we have instances where one of the kids in my class, he plugged his Chromebook into the wall with his charger and it just started emitting a weird screeching sound. So they, they put it down there and our, our IT guy couldn't even find what was wrong with it. He took it apart several times and could not find anything wrong with it. Even Adam couldn't. Like, it's just hard to find stuff when it breaks or it's not when it how it's going to break it's when it's going to break but yeah he has uh, he's, he's uh, performing a service and getting a certification yeah that's great I have a hard enough time turning my computer on <laughs> <laughs> for me and my family I'm, I'm kind of like the IT guy <laughs> me and my grandpa are, my grandpa he is a retired veteran and he works down at Zanesville's Legion and sometimes he'll work on the machines they have for like bingo slots and like that. <laughs> like they had big trouble trying to get them to work recently. And then suddenly he just went down there and they fixed them. Well, Lieutenant Governor, I know uh, you got a very busy, busy schedule. So we just want to thank you um, so much for taking time today. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Governor DeWine and I would like to uh, present a commendation here for uh, being part of Ohio's In Demand Jobs Week, and we uh, appreciate what you're doing. We're making note uh, that if you want to know where the great jobs are without a college education, you can find them at topjobs.ohio.gov, topjobs.ohio.gov. We have 15 of them there that pay $50,000 a year or more, and uh, it's, uh, doesn't require any college to get these great jobs. So we're, we're ready to uh, get everybody off the bench and into the game. And I thank you, all the students and, uh, and the team for helping us understand uh, how we can better help you. Thank you very much.